I mean, I want Mike to think about what he's going through in life. You've aged his ass 10 years. <laughs> and so what do you think you've done to me? <laughs> We're back for the 2021 season, the joint collaboration, PFTPM and Chris Sims Unbuttoned, presented by Under Armour. Someone's paying That's for this right. crap? Under Armour, baby. We must protect this house. That's right. That's what we're doing these days. You know, we're moving up the ranks. We're, you know, we're not PFT yet. Okay. But Chris Sims, up, but we're going in the right direction. The arrow's pointing up. So I'm, I'm happy about that. Let me tell you something. If you're going to push a product, it's important to actually use a tagline that wasn't removed from the marketing strategy 15 years ago. But still, <laughs> we, we must protect this house once upon a time. The Under Armour slogan, but not anymore. But that's okay. Uh, we will protect this house. Chris is protecting the pirate ship in Tampa before he gets out of town. My objective over the course of the next several minutes or however long we're here is to make this last just long enough that he misses his plane. So, <laughs> thank you. Fingers yeah, thank crossed. You. All right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, la la quick reminder what we do here picks in all games, straight up and against the spread. Last year, I did not have a good year. Well, I did have a good year. Chris had a better year. Chris beat me by Just 17 straight games. Straight up, 191, 77 and 1 for Chris. I was 174, 94 and 1. Against the spread, it was much tighter. Chris barely above water, 132, 130 and 7. I was 127, 135 and 7. And the only category I care about, the money category, the best bets, baby, I was. Yes. Above water. I was breathing air. I was winning money, although I don't wager. 28, 25, and 4. You were way under. You stink at best bets. Oh, you need you. to do the opposite. You need to pick <laughs> your best bets and do the Costanza and do the opposite. Hey, listen to my information. I'm not saying I'm Johnny the Shark Gambler over here, okay? But you can see at least I can pick the winners for the most part. We'll see. Yeah, you were you were good. You started to just pull away from me at the end of the year with the best bets, and it it pisses me off. I'm not going to lie. So uh, I'm coming after your ass this year. Sorry, London. Yeah, I said it, and here we go. I don't think they get this one. Maybe they will. Uh, Maybe they well, will. I don't know that they run this on Sky yet. I'm still no, shocked that they run PFT Live on Sky. All right. Let's get it started. Eagles, three-point underdogs at the Atlanta Falcons. Couple of new coaches, couple of questions, teams that aren't expected to be great. Who do you like in this one and why? Yeah, it's tough because we didn't see a ton of starters from either one of these football teams throughout the preseason. I'm going to go with the Eagles in this matchup, Mike. I am. This is just one of those handful of games I look up, look at to go, could an ups upset happen? Yes, I know the Falcons got Matt Ryan, but I don't know if they're necessarily built for the Arthur Smith offense yet. And I still, even though Dean Pease, the defensive coordinator there, I got questions a little there, just about the overall talent. And where I think that that the Eagles have a little advantage with Nick Sirianni and Shane Steichen, who you know I love as offensive game planners. Now, we haven't really seen what they can do or what they're going to do with Jalen Hurts. And I think this Eagles offensive line has a chance to be very dominant, let alone you got a Devontae Smith in the pass game. So I'm going with the Eagles in the upset here on the road. I'm going to go 24-20 Eagles over Falcons. And the line, by the way, has moved to three and a half, so a, a little more cushion for the Eagles. I'm surprised you're going with the upset because, look, the one thing that distinguishes these two teams is Matt Ryan. And for the first yeah. time in his career, he's got a head coach with an offensive pedigree. He had Dan Quinn. He had Mike Smith before that. And I talked to Matt Ryan within the past couple of weeks. It's a different kind of a vibe when your head coach is an offensive guy. Sure. You've got Calvin Ridley. You've got Kyle Pitts. I just feel like the Eagles are still kind of trying to punch their way out of the bag that they've been stuffed into in the couple of years since they won the Super Bowl. If they were playing in Philly, I may feel differently, although maybe it's good that they're starting this off away from the Philly fans. I like the Falcons in this one, and I don't think it's going to be close. I, I've got 24 to 14. I think it could be worse than that. I, I think that, that the Falcons are going to, and we've seen this from them from time to time yeah. over the past 10 years. We expect them to be bad, and all of a sudden it's like, hey, they're not, they're not that bad. And Matt Ryan is right. the constant, and I, I'm not giving up on Matt Ryan yet. Uh, I hear you there. I'm not gonna. I mean, Matt Ryan. I expect him to play good football, no question. And you make some good points. This one of the. This is one of those games that to me is one of the most unknowns of the weekend. And I, I wouldn't be shocked if it went either way. But I'm glad we disagree right off the bat. Screw you. Let's go to the next game. 
All right, next game. One of the biggest games in the 1 o'clock window, Eastern Time on Sunday. Pittsburgh Steelers drawing the short straw, going to Buffalo. They're welcoming the fans in. There's a great vibe. The Bills are back, baby. The Steelers are six-and-a-half-point underdogs at Buffalo. Who wins and by how many? Yeah, I, I just think it's a tough draw for the Steelers. You know, they're a new offense. T.J. Watt. You know, that issue being resolved. I do worry about the Steelers secondary. I mean, I look at the secondary. I know Minka Fitzpatrick is an elite safety, but the rest of it, I think there's question marks there. I think there's really, I expect the Bills offense to be better than what we even saw last year. I don't know if it's going to lead to necessarily better stats from Josh Allen. I just think it's going to be even more diverse. They're going to have more confidence in his ability to do different things, you know, within that offense. I'm going the Bills you know, kind of pull away late in this one. You know, I, I'm like, it's 24-21, and they score a late touchdown, something along there. So I ended up going 30-21 Bills winning the first game against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, look, I, uh, I, you're already threading needles, baby. I think – I know. Oh, no, you have – no, no, you don't – Yeah, no, you have I'm going them up here. Covering. Sorry. Yeah, right. I, 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 I've picked 27-20. I'm just on the other side – of the six and a half point margin. So I've got the Bills and I've got the Bills to cover. I just think this is a tough pop spot for the Steelers. At least they won't have to worry about the pressure of carrying an 11 and 0 streak to start the season into November or December. So that's some good news. But they had to go to Buffalo at some point. It stinks for them that they had to do it right out of the gates. But as Juju Smith Schuster told me earlier this week, I'd rather go there in September than December. There's something to be said for that. But it's going to be very tough to get the win. If the Steelers pull this off, then we're yeah. immediately going to be thinking, what the hell is going on in the AFC? I just think it's going to be very difficult with the new offense for the Steelers. T.J. Watt not necessarily being ready as he could be, and the Bills picking up where they left off last year. I could see a shootout. I could, you know, what's the over under 48? Yeah, I know. I got it just just on the under. I could see it go over 48, but I'll go. I'll stick with 27-20 Bills. Yeah, I, I I hear you, and you know, it's another game again. It's we only saw Big Ben. You know, out there in preseason game number two, I'm excited for what I saw in that offense. And, of course, you know, the unknown can be an advantage. Sean McDermott might not know exactly what to expect, how to attack it. Um, I, I do think we will see a better Steelers offense. I just think we got a Bills team that, you know, is pretty damn comfortable with who they are. and They got they got Super Bowl aspirations. And then just hitting Josh Allen week one is is tough on the Steelers defense. Jets Panthers in Carolina the Panthers are four point favorites against the New York Jets Sam Darnold getting an immediate chance at revenge against the team that made him a third overall pick and then traded him away Panthers minus four you know and as we do this I'm looking at my potential best bets and I look at Panthers minus four with all that talent that they're amassing against a Jets team that is basically starting from scratch. Mm -hmm. Who do you like? Uh huh. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I have the same thoughts as you. I do. I'm going Panthers 27 17 and you, you hit on it. First off, the Jets have questions at the corner position. Oh, the Panthers got stars at receiver and a good tight end and a really good pass catching back out of the backfield. It's the Seattle scheme that Salah has brought from the Jets. They lost their best pass rusher. Jared Davis, their, very, their linebacker in the middle. Again, the scheme that's very reliant on that second level of those guys. He's not there. Uh, I, and I just think, you know, I think the Panthers are that team to watch out for this year. Uh, you know, you know kind of what you're going to get scheme-wise from the Jets. It's LaFleur. You're going to see a lot what Matt LaFleur did from Mike LaFleur. So you expect that. Uh, I just think Carolina's more talented, and I think Sam Darnold's going to be on a mission this year. 27-17, Panthers. Look, if the Panthers can't beat the Jets at home to start the season, the Panthers are going to suck this year. It's that simple. You can't lose to the Jets week one if you are going to be a potential contender in the NFC, and I know you believe in the Panthers to be a contender. I think they could be yeah. as well. I'm not as sold as you are. I didn't pick them to make the playoffs. You did for this game, and I like what the Jets are doing. I like where they're headed. I think they could be contenders as soon as next year if it works out with Zach Wilson, but not this year. 23-13 to 13 is the score that I've selected for that game, so we both have the Panthers by 10. We both have the Panthers covering, and maybe we'll both have the Panthers as one of our best bets. The Minnesota Vikings going to Cincinnati place where Mike Zimmer was the defensive coordinator. Bengals, I don't know what to think about the Bengals. Yeah. I don't know what to think about the Vikings. I know this. The Vikings are three-point favorites. Who do you like? Or yeah, no, yes, three-point favorites. Three-point favorites. 
I, you're right. I mean, I, I don't expect Joe Burrow to look very good. I don't. I mean, come on. It's, it's one of the, the, the highlights of week one is his health status. And, you know, what will he look like? Really concerning all the things we heard, you know, in preseason and training camp coming out of Cincinnati. The Bengal, I mean, the Vikings also concerning with the way they looked on the offensive side of the ball. I'm picking the Vikings to win this game, but I think it will be close. One, just because, you know, I, I know the Vikings defense is better, right? I'm not sold the secondary special or anything that way, but I think ultimately what I really look at is I think the Bengals have some size up front to slow down Dalvin Cook and the rushing attack, and that's where I think they keep it close. I'm going to go Vikings 19-17. Wow. Wow. So there's the needle threading from Christopher David Sims. Bam. Vikings to win, Bengals to cover. I think if it's that close, the Bengals will just win the game. I, I, I don't think the Vikings – are mentally tough enough to win a close game like that. They've got to win by seven or more, or they're done. I look at this, and this is one of those, uh, should we should we label the, do we need a feature, the smoking crack line? Uh, because <laughs> you, you, you coined it a few days ago, somebody in Vegas is smoking crack. Vikings only a three-point favorite. I don't know what, what people see in the Bengals or what people don't see in the Vikings. We didn't see Dalvin Cook in the preseason. We barely saw Justin Jefferson. And as I said during PFT Live on Friday, if the Vikings don't win this one handily, they are going to have a long year. I think they go in there and they win this one big. I got 30 to 13. I, and, wow. and this is me setting aside any and all youthful rooting interests. I just, this just feels like one of those games. If this is going to be a Vikings year where they get to the playoffs or at least during contention, they got to win this game because the Bengals are overmatched. The Vikings yeah. should win well, this game by easily more than three points. I think you're putting the Vikings a little too much on a pedestal. That would just be my two cents. We'll see how it plays out. That and doesn't I hear you happen the, very often. No, when I hear you with the close game thing, and we got like a huge machine coming here, so you're going to hear some beeps going on here. But, like, the one thing I think we can look at, the Bengals secondary a little bit better than people realize, and I do like the size up front. And I hated how the Vikings offense looked. And I got to see Clint Kubiak before I buy into it. So this is really loud. Do you want to stop for a second and let this thing go by, no, or are we going to keep going? Good. We got to keep know going, baby. You gotta, unless, you. unless you, like I, are hoping that you'll miss your plane, no, let's just keep going. You. Let's power through it. I go play We're through the crowd here. noise. It's okay. It's a damn crane that's going by me. Literally a crane is going by me. <laughs> let's go. Send keep it going. somebody I don't to care. tell that guy to shut the hell up. All right, let's go. <laughs> 49ers at the Lions. Biggest spread of week one 49ers nine point favorites do they cover yes they do I just think the 49ers are one of the best teams in football I, I know they got to stay healthy and they didn't do that last year but man they were ravaged by injuries last year to an extent we've never really seen a team be ravaged like that you know in, in recent history so and they were still you know like what were they seven and nine six and ten right in there in a handful of games regardless I just look at their offensive line I think it's special their offensive weapons special their defensive line in front seven are really good and I just got to see the Anthony Lynn knee biting you know Dan Campbell Aaron Glenn coaching regime kind of come off the ground first before I can buy into the the Lions yet 31 17 Niners I always recommend very strongly against panic as a result of the week one game. But if the 49ers lose to the Lions, panic if you're a San Francisco fan. This is not a game that the 49ers have any business even having within shouting distance if they intend to be what people think they can be. Even with the Jimmy Garoppolo, Trey Lance, eventually it's going to be Lance. Who knows what's going to happen? And, and all the ways that the 49ers have freaked themselves out over the quarterback position. This is a game where... They should go in and win easily. I've got the same score as you, 31-17. Wow. to 17. It's a new culture. And it, hey, anytime you change culture in the NFL, that's yeah. fine, but you don't have the players to fit it. It's going to take a couple of years. They're not going to turn all these guys into kneecap biters. they got to go find their kneecap biters. You can't yeah. find enough of them in one season. No, it's a valid point. You're right. It is a total change of culture. Yeah, they're trying to get the guys and infuse them in there to what fits them. They don't have that. You know, and again, there's lack of weapons on the offensive side of the ball to really scare the 49ers. If there's a weak spot with the 49ers, it's the corners. I don't think Jared Goff and that Lions offense can be able to take advantage of that anyway. So that's why, uh, you know, I'm with you on the 49ers there. All right. Jacksonville at Houston. One of these two teams, barring a tie, 
will somehow start the season 1-0. Jaguars started 1-0 last year with an upset of the Colts, and then they lost their next 15. Three-point favorites they are in Houston. Who do you like? I, I've gone both ways with this. I, I, you know, again, I, it is Jacksonville still finding their feet, new regime like you just talked about with the Detroit Lions. But I guess what I would say more than that, what's better about Jacksonville and their situation as compared to the Lions is there is more talent on their football team. And there's some good receivers and a quarterback that's special. Yeah, we want to see their O-line be better, but can the Texans really take advantage of that unit there? So I've flip-flopped here a little bit with this one in my mind over the last few days. Um, I'm, I, well, I, want, I wanted to pick 23-20 Jaguars, but that's a push, and I don't want to do pushes. So let me say that it's going to be 24-20 Jaguars. I'm just going to go with Trevor Lawrence, the way he looked in that third preseason game. You know, Urban Meyer, I wouldn't be surprised. He's got a few tricks up his sleeves just to jumpstart his football team, and I have no faith in the Texans there. That's why I'm going 24-20 Jaguars. I've got no faith in the Texans for now. They're going to have to prove it to me. David Culley's going to have to prove it to me that he is suited to being an NFL head coach. I don't expect the Texans to win many games at all this year. They've got the Deshaun Watson thing hovering over them. Jaguars, 17-7. to They may not win many this year, but I think they will win this one, and I think they will cover. Next up, Seahawks at Indy. Sneaky great game. To start the season, Shane Waldron running the offense for the Seattle Seahawks. Carson Wentz at quarterback. All systems go for him to come back from that broken foot that we thought had his season start in jeopardy. Seahawks three-point favorites. Who do you like? You know, you know I haven't picked the Seahawks to go to the playoffs this year. On the road, the Colts, fans in the stadium. You know, again, I think there's – Matt Eberflus, the defensive coordinator for the Colts, you know, they run the same system, that Seattle system. I, I have more faith, I, at least in my opinion, in Frank Reich and company coming up with a game plan over maybe Shane Waldron and company coming up with the right game plan to beat Eberflus in that defense. You know, it's always hard picking against Russell Wilson, but I guess what I, you know, I think the Colts are a, a more complete roster. Yes, they don't have the best player on the field than Russell Wilson, but I'm going to kind of go with a shocker here. I don't even know if it is a shocker. I'm going Colts 24-21 at home. I think they get off on wow. the right foot under Carson Wentz. Wow, I got the Seahawks 24-16. Now you got me a little bit nervous about it, but it's good. We disagree. You've got the I like it. covering and winning. I've got the Seahawks winning and covering. I just think that it's going to be 2020 all over again, out of the gates. That offense, DK Metcalf, Tyler Locke at the running yeah. backs. I know the offensive line isn't great, but they got Dwayne Brown back in the fold. They got Jamal Adams. The question for me about the Seahawks is second half of the season. First half of the season, I think it's going to look a lot like last year. And the Colts just kind of have that vibe, you know, between the large percentage of guys who aren't vaccinated and the injuries. I, I like the Seahawks in this one, even though it's not an easy spot for them to come to Indianapolis to start the season. No, yeah, I'm, I'm like I'm not in love with either team's vibe in the preseason. That's where I kind of was like, oh man, this is a tough one for me to go with here. So, you know, again, we saw the Seahawks defense right the ship a little bit at the end of the year, but let's not forget that first half of last year they were on a record pace to be like the worst defense in the history of football. And I still think, who's the difference maker, pass rusher? Who's the good corner that can cover man to man? And do that. And then I just, you know, again, the my Frank Reich thing. And I think, you know, Carson Wentz, I, I, it does disappoint me. He didn't get to play in the preseason and even practice a little bit. Uh, but he does know the system. We know that as, a, you know, being with Frank Reich before. So that's what just gave the, the edge to the Colts in my, in my mind. Arizona Cardinals have a tough draw to start the season. They go to Nashville to take on the Tennessee Titans. Titans three-point favorites. Chris, who do you like in that one? Well, I'm going with the Titans. I just, I don't have, you know, I, I know the Cardinals improved their roster with J.J. Watt and Zayvon Collins in the first round, you know, and, and uh, I'm missing, improved the offensive line, yes. But, like, you know, something you brought up at PFT today, it's not even about that with me. To me, it's more about, like, what's Cliff Kingsbury going to bring to the table that's different for the Cardinals' offense that gives them an advantage? They're too simple. And with a guy like Vrabel, you know, and that defensive staff there, when they're simple, 
simple. It's New Englandy. They can figure you out and make life hard on you. And, and also, you know, Julio Jones on the offensive side of the ball with Tannehill and Derrick Henry and, uh, you know, of course, A.J. Brown and a pretty good tight ends to go along with it. You know, the Titans are just, to me, a, a more complete football team. Uh, and that's why I'm going to go, what the hell's my score here? Where am I at? Okay, I'm going, I had a push originally. I'm going 27-23 Titans over the Cardinals. Same page across the board. I got 30-23. Either way, we got the Titans, and we got the Titans covering. Look, I don't know how good the Titans are ultimately going to be. I, I, Derrick Henry's not going to rush for 2,000 yards this year. How right, good is he right. going to be? At some point, the wheels are going to start to come off from him. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. But they, they definitely have that weight of expectations with the addition of Julio Jones. I think they get off to a good start. Whether they sustain it or not remains to be seen. Another great game in the 1 o'clock window, potentially. The L.A. Chargers taking on the Washington football team in Washington. Chargers riding a lot of buzz from some, including me. Washington riding a division championship. And on notice that the Cowboys are going to be pretty good this year. Washington a one-point favorite, Chris. Only one point separating the two. Who do you have? Yeah, I'm going Washington here. I am. You know, I, listen, I, the Chargers are a team to watch out for. We know that. Yes. I mean, Justin Herbert's special. But I expect Washington's defense to be one of the best in football. And added to that, they have that formula of where they can they can just rush their front four, which should be the best front four in football, and just play coverage in the back end. Justin Herbert learning a new system. I still got questions about their offensive line. I think that worries me on that side of the ball. And then, you know, even on the other side of the ball, you know, Washington, I like their offense. Yeah, I know Ryan Fitzpatrick's a journeyman, but he seems to play the position pretty well the last few years, and I think he's got some weapons around him. And the Chargers defense, yeah, I know they got Bosa and Derwin James. To me, they, there's just an element. There's not great corners. There's, they need somebody to step up other than Bosa on the D-line that can be an ass kicker, a game wrecker, or whatever. And because of that, I just think it's a tough draw going across the country and playing a Washington football team that I think is going to be pretty legit this year. Uh, I go Washington 24-16. Another disagreement. I'm not oh, getting off baby. the Chargers bandwagon. I'm still in the process of getting up on it. Chargers, I like what they're going to be able to do here. And I believe in Washington. I pick both of these teams to make it to the playoffs this year. But I think the Chargers on paper are better. And as long as they can keep their players healthy, they can fulfill that potential. Chargers 20, Washington 13. This will not be one of my best bets. I don't feel great about this, but I had to pick a lane. And the lane I pick is Justin Herbert. I got a lot of faith in Brandon Staley. I got a lot of faith in that defense if the guys are healthy. And Derwin James, Joey yeah. Bosa are. That's huge. I like the Chargers in that one. All right, this is normally a point where we would take a break in the joint collaboration known as the PFTPM and Chris Sims Unbuttoned Podcast presented by Under Armour, but instead we plow forward. 4 p.m. games, either 4.05 or 4.25. This one is a 4.05, and man, it, it is it a 4.05? I think it is a 4.05. I don't know, here, but either you. way. I got it right Browns, here. I'll be Chiefs, able to tell you, you in two it out, seconds. Let me know. Because yeah. I thought Packers, Saints, and Broncos, Giants were the 425 games. There's four 425, 425 games. Game? This oh, is a wow. 425. Wow. It says it wow. on the NFL, yeah, the webpage. It is. Right. There's four 425 games. Yep. Go well, ahead. You want to lead this all, off? All four of them. All four of them are compelling. Browns at the Chiefs. Chiefs are five and a half point favorites. Chris, go ahead. Yeah, okay. Well, you know, I, I, I look, I think both of these teams are Super Bowl contenders. I think, you know, I picked the Browns to go to the Super Bowl. I think they're going to get off the schneid. You know, I'm over the Browns as the Browns. You know, a few years ago, the Chiefs was the Chiefs, and the Bucks have been the Bucks, and, you know, the Red Sox were the Red Sox, and the Cubs were the Cubs. At some point, it's going to break, and I just think the Browns got the mold to do it. I think they match up very well with the Chiefs. But having said that, it's still week one, and Patrick Mahomes, and the starters didn't play a ton in the preseason for the Cleveland Browns, and the Chiefs did. I think the Chiefs are going to be a little bit more ready. The new offensive line on a mission that way. I'm not saying it's going to end up this way at the end of the year, but for this game right here, I'm going Chiefs 31-27. So I got them winning, but not covering the spread. I got 34-27, an extra field goal in there from Harrison Butker to allow the Chiefs to cover. I think in a weird sort of way, the fact that the Browns gave the Chiefs a wake-up call in the playoffs yeah, yeah. makes the Chiefs more likely to not be caught napping in this game. You're not, you know, if you had won that game 38-10, to 10, you think, ah, the Browns is the Browns. No, now you, you're on notice. Forget about the Juju Smith-Schuster catchphrase for the Browns. The Chiefs know they're for, for real. 
Yeah, no, Mike, that's a great point, and I'm glad you brought it up because, you know, we talked about this on PFT a little bit through the like, training camp. The Browns, you know, their ass is red about that game still in the playoffs. You know, they think they should have won. We know they had a few bad breaks uh, and everything like that, but also, like, you know, we, we heard comments from John Johnson, right, a new player on their team from the Rams, talking about, man, uh, this team wants, wants Kansas City. They want another crack at them. You're right. And that's why I think the Chiefs played their starters a lot in the preseason because they know they got a team coming to town that's ready and views themselves as a Super Bowl contender. And I'm with you. I think they'll be ready and won't be caught by surprise in this one. Yep, we agree on that one then, although I have the cover for the Chiefs. You have the cover for the Browns. Dolphins at Patriots, a sneaky great game because it's the Alabama Reunion Bowl. Tua Tonga Vailoa, Mac Jones, both starting the game. Patriots three-point favorites. Who do you like? Yeah, equal teams in a lot of way, you know. But I, I think I do like the pa uh, the Patriots roster better. Of course, I got a little more faith in Bill Belichick and McDaniel's than Flores and Gotzi right now, who I think the world of. You know, I think this Dolphin team is, you know, the real deal, but. I have less questions about Mac Jones than I do Tua. You know, I know Mac Jones can make all throws all over the field. He's a magic man in the pocket, great decision maker. There's still things with Tua that I'd like to see. And I think he's a little bit predictable where he goes with the ball. You know, one thing that jumped out to me about studying him in the preseason, every throw was down the middle, down the middle, down the middle, down the middle. New England's going to see that. They know Tua's arm's not real strong either. I think they're going to force him to try to throw the ball outside. I'm going Patriots here, 24-20, Mike. You know what? I'm in that same ballpark. I've got Patriots 20-16. to I'm looking at the official PFT picks, and I accidentally picked a push. I have 20-17. to I'm amending that to 20-16. to I like the Patriots cool. to win, Patriots to cover. They're at home. Fans are back for the first time. Let's not understate the home field advantage for a lot right. of these teams that played with none last year. Patriots had no fans all year long, and those fans are going to want to get ready for what's coming in a few weeks when Tommy comes back to town. They're going to be lathered up. They're going to be ready to go. That's an advantage for the Patriots. Mac Jones, all the players they signed in free agency, I think the Patriots are the better team right now. I know the Dolphins are ascending, but the yeah. Patriots aren't. The Patriots aren't having the bottom drop out. They're going to be fine this year. I have them exactly. going to the playoffs. I have them winning this game 20-16. to 16. And I always say, don't worry about the results of week one unless you lose at home to a division rival. You need to win that home game against a division rival because if they beat you in your own building, you still have to go play them in theirs, and that puts you in a tough spot to try to win that division because you could end up needing to make up three games. Now, now that there's 17 games, maybe it's a little easier. But either the Patriots will be ready to win this game on Sunday, almost to the point where maybe I'll make it a best bet. We'll see. Packers versus Saints at Jacksonville. Neutral site because of the hurricane that has knocked the Superdome offline until the Saints' second home game later this month. Packers, three-and-a-half-point favorites on the road against the Saints on the road. Who do you like? Man. This is a tough one to call. I'm threading the needle here just right off the bat. I'm taking the Packers 30-28. to 28. I am. And the only reason I'm doing it is just because of Aaron Rodgers. I think it's a very even match. I don't expect the Packers to be able to run the ball much on the Saints front, which is very good. You know, and we know, you know, even on the other side of the ball, I think the Saints are going to be able to run the ball on the Packers a little bit. And especially now that you got Jameis Winston, who we know has a stronger arm than Drew Brees did at the end of his career. You've made, you've made the point many times during this week on PFT just about, hey, you're going to have to defend more of the field when you play the New Orleans Saints in the last few years. And I think that is a real threat that they have, you know, bringing it to the table. I, I'm really – it's Aaron Rodgers – and just the hurricane crap that New Orleans has had to go through the last few weeks, why I'm giving them the edge in this one. That's really all it comes down to. So I went 30-28 uh, Packers. Threading the old needle. I worry about Corey Lindsley being gone. I worry about David Bakhtiari, the left tackle, being injured. Lindsley, yeah. of course, the center. I worry right. about the defense, the shift from Mike Pettin to Joe Barry. Z'Darri Smith has been practicing. How healthy is he? I, I am on the... Everyone is sleeping on the Saints train. I put them in the top 10 of the power rankings. When I really sat down and thought about it, you take Jameis Winston, you incorporate the deep ball, you do force defenders to account for every blade of grass on the field. You have Sean Payton, the mad scientist, 
and you don't have the element in week one, most likely, of Sean Payton showing up two hours before kickoff and saying to the quarterback, I got five more plays for you, because there's no other film for him to watch from other games. He's watched it all. He's seen it all, yeah. other than last night's game. Maybe he's got a couple of ideas coming from last night's game. Maybe there's something he's going to see that he steals and uses on Sunday, but he doesn't have to worry about Winston doesn't have to worry about a bunch of new plays come Sunday. They're going to be ready to go. I think they're going to have a good game plan. I like the Saints to win this one. I know it's not going to oh, be easy. Baby. It stinks right. that they can't play at home. And there, there will be, I believe, more Packers fans than Saints fans present. 27-20 to 20 is the score I have. So another disagreement. All right. Although we yeah. both agree that the Saints are the right play from the standpoint of taking the points. All right, Broncos-Giants, MetLife Stadium, rematch of Super Bowl Twenty One, a game in which somebody's dad, not mine, was the MVP. <laughs> Broncos-Giants, Teddy Bridgewater versus Daniel Jones, who do you like? Well, yeah, these are two different teams than the 1986 football teams for sure. I mean, these are, these are two teams that I think we both look like they're going in the right direction, you know, but there's some real question marks about uh, both football teams. You know, right off the bat, the first thing that worries me is the Giants offensive line versus Bradley Chubb and Von Miller, of course. I mean, the Giants offensive line didn't look good in the preseason. Saquon Barkley, we don't know if he's officially even playing yet, right? I know he took some contact and practice this week, so there's still that question mark. Don't know where that goes. Kenny Galladay, you know, he got injured in training camp. So I look at it, and then here's another thing I'll just say just on a personal level. Like Pat Shermer, he's going to want to kick the crap out of the New York Giants. I mean, they fired his ass, Great and point. he's going to want to fire back at him, right? So when they I see that, his whole body. Just, yeah, they fired his whole body. Exactly right. So I, I'm, going, uh, I'm going Broncos here, 21-17. I think it'll be a close football game, but I just think they're in a little bit better spot than the Giants are right now. He sets aside his rooting interest. I was if – I, if, of all the games – that we were going to disagree on. I thought this was the one. I got Broncos 23-14. I love what Teddy Bridgewater can do. He has galvanized that team. They needed someone like that, someone to bring everyone together. They love Teddy Bridgewater. Right. Remember how much they loved him in New Orleans? They love him already in Denver. And and I think that the Broncos, I, I don't have them going to the playoffs, but I could see them finishing third in the AFC West yeah. and maybe being in the fringes of the discussion. I like yeah. them to get off to a good start. They have to avoid the injury bug. They're healthy for now. Broncos 23 Giants 14. By the way, I haven't been mentioning the over-unders. Oh, well, this is the lowest one of the week at 41 and a half. I'll try to do better. It's still week one for us, too. All right, let's pivot to the primetime games. Bears-Rams Sunday night football. Matthew Stafford versus Andy Dalton until we see some Justin Fields. Will we see some Justin Fields? I don't know. The Rams are seven and a half point favorites with an over-under. See, Pete, I can be taught. Of 46 and a half, who do you like? Uh, I mean, I don't like the Bears. I know that. I don't. I mean, you know, we've discussed this a lot. We've seen, we've seen, you know, the Matt Nagy offense with a quarterback like Andy Dalton. Yeah, negative ghost rider. I don't like it. And it didn't look good in the preseason. Added to the fact the strength of their team, their defense, also didn't look good. I mean, you know, Mitchell Trubisky and company, Tua, there were a lot of starters on the field in both of those games for the Chicago Bears. And they moved the ball down the field just seamlessly like it was nothing. New defensive coordinator there. Yeah, you know, no Kyle Fuller anymore. He went to the Broncos, so they're down a real good cover corner. I just don't see it with the Bears. I just think week two we're going to see Justin Fields, week three, somewhere in that area. But the Rams, we know they got studs on defense. I'm a believer in Raheem Morris as the defensive coordinator. He'll know how to defend this Bears offense. And then, you know, like we've talked about nine zillion times, McVay and, Sean, and, and Stafford together. Yeah, I like the combination. I think you're going to see McVay grow, and I think Stafford's going to say, hey, shut the hell up, all you haters, and I'm pretty damn good, and I was, you know, in a shit spot in Detroit. Sorry. Yes, uh, but the over-under on you <laughs> saying a word that you shouldn't have said was 50 minutes. If you bet the under, you'll win. What's your score for that Bam. game? Oh, yeah, I should do that. That's right. Rams 28, Bears 17. 30 to 17 for me. Same points, same analysis, same reasoning. Monday Night Football, Ravens minus four at the Las Vegas Raiders. Ravens down to Tyson Williams, Le'Veon Bell, whoever else they can find to run the football against a Raiders team that has a lot of optimism. It's easy to be optimistic when you're zero and zero, but they got a right. good team coming to town for the first real game at the new stadium, which will be full of fans. Who do you like? 
Yeah, I, I do like the Ravens. I know it's been a lot of adversity. You know, what they did just sign Latavius Murray. I think he's going to fit better than Le'Veon Bell. So I think, you, you know, he should be in shape. He played in the preseason training camp for the Saints. So he should be able – they'll be able to tell, hey, run that way. You know, Lamar just tell him, hey, I'm going to give you the ball. you got to run between the guard and tackle. You don't know the play? Hey, it's going right here between the guard and tackle over here. He'll be fine. So I like that aspect. We know the Raiders' front, not impressive. I think the Ravens will still be able to push them around to do some things there you know Lamar has grown as a passer every year I continue I think we'll continue to see that growth and the Raiders just too many question marks for me across the board new offensive line now with Wink Martindale and the Ravens defense blitzing everybody I know there's no Marcus Peters but I, I can't pull the trigger on the the Raiders in this one I'm going Baltimore Ravens 34 27 I do think we're going to see some points in this one I got 24 16 Ravens do you trust Latavius Murray in blitz pickup, or do you just only run the ball if he's on the field? I, I think you could trust him in blitz pickup. You know, he's been in – he's a, he's a seasoned veteran, right, having uh, been with the Raiders before, of course, and then the Saints. He's going to understand blitz pickup pretty quickly, as long as it's not something crazy complicated. So I think they'll be able to rely on him more than we would think just uh, having him been there just for a few days. We'll see where he goes. I, I, I would think he plays, but but maybe not. Maybe they hold him out to next week. We'll see. Either way, it's not going to change my decision. Baltimore's going to win. We may see some Le'Veon Bell on Monday night, which which adds a little juice, adds a little adds a little interest to that Monday night football game. And I'd forgotten about the Latavius Murray connection to the Raiders, but he was with the Raiders and the Vikings and the Saints. Now he's with the Baltimore Ravens officially. All right, time for on this joint collaboration of PFTPM and Chris Sims Unbuttoned, presented by Under Armour, our best bets over under against the spread, whatever it is. If you're making three wagers this week, Chris, which ones are you making? Let's go uh, your first. Well, I'm going to go with the first one. I'm going with the 49ers on that one. I am. I, I just think they're a Shanahan week one. He's going to have some wrinkles up his sleeve. Is Trey Lance going to play? I don't know how the, the, the what's the status of that chipped finger in his bone or chipped bone in his finger. Let's get that right. It's early and I was up late. Okay. You know what I mean? But even if you I slept think, 12 hours, you still would have said that. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't matter. You're right. I'm. I, you're exactly right. I have no defense against that. You're, I probably would have said that either way. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, you give him that, those weapons, the team they got around him, extra time to game plan. And then even if Trey Lance comes in just to purely run the football, it's another wrinkle I like. And I, I just got to see the Lions before I believe it. 49ers, I think they cover that, that nine-point spread. Uh, that, that's gutsy because nine's a lot. Not, nine I is, know. Nine is, feels like a setup by uh, the folks in Vegas. I'm going to start off. Um, with the Vikings, 30 to 13 over the Bengals. They may not win by 17. I'd be stunned if they, number one, don't win, and number two, if they win by fewer than three points. And if they lose this game, long season in Minnesota. So give me the Vikings, 30 to 13 over the Bengals, Chris. Yeah, I, okay. I see the logic there. I know. I just, I'm just scared of those that Vikings offense. But uh, I hear you. There's a lot to be concerned with the Cincinnati, the way Burrow and Jamar Chase and everybody looked. All right, let's go. You go to the next one. What's your next best bet? Next one for me, I'm going to the Sunday night game, the L.A. Rams against the Chicago Bears. I don't believe it yet in the Bears. 30-17, to 17, Rams cover the spread. I, I, to me, you know, and, and for me, it's all pasta and meatballs, gut feeling. When I look at the scores, look at the lines, look at the matchups, I, you know, there, there's always three or four that jump off the page at me, and this one jumps off the page. The spread is not big enough for the talent gap between the Rams and the Bears at this point, so I like the Rams. You know, uh, I, I don't want to agree with you, but th this is one I, I agree with you, and this is one of the ones I got starred here on my, my list. Uh, I, I do. I just – too much talent on the Rams team. We know it's very top-heavy, but, yeah, I, the Bears, just the way they looked – my no faith in in the offense schematically by the Bears, everything put together there, and then the unveiling of some of the tricks that Stafford and McVay might be able to bring to the table. I know there's no Cam Akers, but Darrell Henderson should be good, no doubt about it. Sony Michelle is going to be good enough to help them out, and uh, I'm with you. I'm riding that one too. Rams, I got them 28-17. I'm riding it. All right, it's back to you for the last one. Then what do you got? The last one, I'm going to go with the Washington football team. I know they're favored by one, but West Coast team going across the country. I just think Washington's got a team I say watch out for. 
And I do. I worry about that Chargers O-line and Herbert learning a new system. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm feeling Washington in this one. Again, I'm not saying it's like this is doom and gloom for the Chargers all year. I just think this is a tough first week matchup for a team that's, you know, young and got some changing parts. You know, for me, this is another one of those, just like with the Vikings, if you can't win this one, you're going to have a long season. The Carolina Panthers giving four points to the New York Jets. Uh, Panthers win that game. Panthers cover the spread. We lost Christopher. We have one more thing to do. It's the Folsom Prison Blues pick. And I'm going to text Christopher. This is real time. Uh, What is your Folsom Prison Blues pick? And by way of memory, for those of you who... Hang on, I'm trying to multitask, and this isn't good. Uh, The Folsom Prison Blues is a reference to the great scene in Walk the Line when the record producer is explaining to Johnny Cash as he's singing a gospel song that is uninspiring and it's cookie cutter. What's the one song that you would sing if you were lying dead in a gutter and you had one song left? This is the one pick, the Folsom Prison Blues pick, because he goes on to play that song, and it's a very riveting moment in the movie. What's the one game that you believe in? And for me, even though I don't pick the 49ers as a best bet, I don't think there's any way in hell the 49ers lose. And again, if they lose, it's panic time for the 49ers. Uh, So I think the 49ers definitely beat the Detroit Lions. I know I'm not going out on a limb here, but that's not the point. It's the one game that we are willing to stake our lives and our reputations on. And I've texted Chris, and apparently the technical difficulties extend to his cell phone device. Here it comes. 49ers for him as well. I, that's the one I was going to give him. That's the one I figured. If you're Anytime you're taking a team to cover a nine-point spread, it's a safe bet that that would be the one team that you guarantee will win this weekend. Thanks, as always, for some of your time. We will do this moving forward every Thursday. It'll debut 5 p.m. Eastern on PFTPM. It'll also be the Chris Sims Unbuttoned podcast for that day. For now, though, we enter into the first full Sunday of week one, coming off of a great Thursday night game. Can't wait to see what happens on Sunday and Monday night. Football is back. We're glad you're with us. Enjoy the games, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.